All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Ryan M. Hughes, and this is my report on design thinking. So jumping right into it, the first thing we have to ask ourselves is what design thinking is and what it is to me. So for me, design thinking always starts with a who rather than a what. It looks at a much bigger picture and a broader scope. It's just as much about finding the problem as it is finding a solution, and it really encourages creativity and thinking outside of the box. Now looking a little deeper into that, I prepared this graphic here to the right um, that shows traditional thinking as being A plus B equals X. And with traditional thinking, it just shows that we just have a problem and we're just going to throw a solution at it and hope it sticks. Um, and then moving up down to design thinking, you could see that it's a much more complex process, um, a lot more freer thinking. So A plus B or C or D or E or F equals X or maybe even Z. So basically what this represents is it shows that we kind of take, a, like I said before, a larger scope, we take a bigger picture and we work around it. You know, it's not necessarily a one solid answer to come up with one solid solution. It's working from the inside out. Like I said before, who rather than what? So going on to a couple of examples, the first example I have here is the Turbo Creo from Specialized. Now the Turbo Creo is an electric road bike um, that allows not as fit riders to ride with more serious cyclists. Just like if you were to have um, a wife or a husband who was an extreme cyclist who could go out 100 mile rides, but maybe you weren't quite as fit and you couldn't go on those rides or experience all the great adventures they come home and tell you about. So this really solved that problem for people in general. Now moving on to the next point here, it's more lightweight than anything on the market. And the reason Specialized did this was not because they just wanted to have that, that big figure there on their website to brag and boast about. They did this because a lot of people don't want to ride a heavier bike. It's not as comfortable. You don't get the experience that you're you know, spouse that's riding a normal bike is going to have right next to you. This is going to be a very, give it a very similar feel and allow you to experience almost everything a normal bike is going to feel like. Also, it has a longer range than any competitors. And again, this wasn't because they just wanted to have that, that glory statistic on their website. They did this because they want people to be able to ride with their spouses for a long amount of time with other competitors bikes they don't go nearly as far as you would go on a normal road bike ride so you wouldn't really be able to ride it with your spouses or your friends or whoever was a serious cyclist because it couldn't go as far so it was the other this bike solved a personal problem as opposed to other companies just throwing something and seeing if it sticks and that's exactly why Specialized was one of the last companies to bring a product like this to the market they really took the time to develop what the people needed as opposed to just what looked good on their website. Moving on to another example, I wanted to bring Google Translate and you know Google in general just kind of up to up as an example because same thing, they started with the who, their goal was to break down language barriers and to make the world more accessible. Um, they did this with translating conversations in real time so you could actually grab your phone, talk into it, Say you're at a restaurant in New Zealand or Mexico and you don't speak Spanish, you could just put your phone up to the waiter, they could speak into the phone, problem solved, it translates it for you. It started with a people first approach. And that was the big thing of why this was a design thinking example that makes it really good. Um, it also does this with pictures too. So if you're out and about and you're getting lost, like a lot of people were because they couldn't read signs, you know, you could end up hundred miles in the wrong direction in a country you've never been in before. Well, Google took something that the people were having problems with and came up with a solution that just goes ahead and put your phone up to the picture and it shows what it was. And it was a real design thinking process because everyone could use this no matter what ethnicity or, you know, it's a very simple program. Interface is really easy. Everything about it is very streamlined. It's a very design thinking, design forward product. So the steps of design thinking start with empathize, then move to define, ideate, prototype, and test. Empathizing is 
basically putting yourself in the shoes of the people who may be experiencing a problem or who you might want to make a product for is just putting yourself in a real world scenario, bringing yourself down to the level of the people that you want to provide for. Now going to the next step defining is once you were in those shoes and you found the problem, then you define it. You understand what it is. You really map, map it out clear so you know how to move forward. And then moving forward, you move to ideate or what I like to call brain, the brainstorming section. And this is where you start to kind of come up with ideas. You write stuff down. You know, you really go free and do write down whatever comes to your mind, whatever solution you might think might work. And then you move on to the next step, prototype. And prototypes where you just really refine what you came through in the previous step into a prototype. It could be a working, a basic working model. It could be tape and glue. It could be a picture you drew. It could be something raw. It could be all the way to something extreme. But it's just something that allows someone to physically see what is going to be done. And then finally, testing. Testing is pretty self-explanatory. It's putting your prototype to the test, seeing what, what works, what doesn't work. It's the final step, and it's also one of the most important steps. So that's the those are the steps of design thinking. Now moving forward, how I'm going to use design thinking is I'm going to kind of put myself in my customer's shoes to identify what experiences they would want when they go to my bicycle shop. Um, the next thing I'm, I would kind of do is go to other bicycle shops and see what I like as a consumer because if I do that, I'll be able to kind of think what my consumers would want to do when they come to my shop. Also visit a variety of retail stores and examine what is bringing customers in. Maybe I could find a way to evolve something from another retail store that might be like a clothing store and adapt it into my bicycle shop. And then also I could just start thinking of things in my everyday life I might struggle with and what I what I might do to make them easier. So that that would just kind of put me in the right direction for maybe future business ideas. Well, that's the end of my report. Here's a list of my references. Thanks everybody for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at any time. Thanks.